Hello, I'm Robert Satloff, the Siegel Executive Director at the Washington Institute. Eight years ago, when my eldest son went off to college, I made a video to help all those parents who, like me, were worried about how their kids would navigate the complex politics of Israel on campus. My advice then was, relax, get informed, and get engaged. The problem is serious, but not DEFCON 3. Eight years ago, that was wise advice. Now I'm back with a more sobering message. First, the problem is more serious, pressing, and urgent than ever before. As you probably heard, a new poll by the ADL shows that nearly three out of four Jewish students on campus today have suffered or witnessed anti-Semitism. We're deluding ourselves if we don't recognize the enormity of the problem many students face. Whether they want to express their pride in Israel, or they want to find some objective, thoughtful discussion of current Middle East issues, or even if they want to voice their criticism of this or that policy of the government of Israel, without having to join a crowd of radical anti-Zionists to find a platform. On too many campuses, especially, I'm sorry to say, campuses of what we euphemistically call elite colleges and universities, space has narrowed for our kids to do any of those things in the classroom, in the cafeteria, in the library, and even in the dorms. And on some campuses, trying to do these things has become downright dangerous. In that video eight years ago, I reminded both parents and students that college is not exactly the real world, especially when it comes to the Middle East. That reality gap has only grown over time. Just think about it. In the current conflict, President Biden has firmly condemned Hamas for its barbaric attack on innocent women, men, and children and he has supported Israel in its just war against the terrorist group. The policy debate today is over tactics, whether Israel should persist in its goal to wipe out Hamas as a political and military entity, or just dramatically degrade its capabilities, whether there should be a humanitarian pause to allow transit of relief supplies, or a longer ceasefire, which both Biden and the Israelis consider a bonus for Hamas. I have watched a lot of video of campus protests in recent weeks, and I've read a lot about teach-ins by professors, and it's a different world there. Rarely have I seen or heard condemnation of Hamas or calls for the unconditional release of hostages. But I've heard a lot of speakers talk about the butchery of October 7th, the rape of girls, the murder of infants as, quote, resistance to occupation. I've heard a lot about the decolonization of Palestine as though the 30 or so children taken hostage from their cribs and playrooms were colonizers. I've heard a lot about something called intersectionality, the bizarre idea that you can't fight against climate change, you can't support LGBTQ rights, or you can't protest George Floyd level police brutality without also supporting the most radical Palestinian attack on Israel as though a black gay climate activist stands a better chance in Gaza City than Tel Aviv. And again and again I heard the chant from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, a slogan that has only one meaning, that from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea there is room for only one state, and it's not the nation state of the Jewish people. Yes, I'm sorry to say, on many college campuses today, calls for the genocidal annihilation of Israel are what passes for acceptable, legitimate, 
academic discourse. And far too frequently, university presidents, chancellors, and deans have responded with bland, spineless statements that fail to call out anti-Semitism or define guardrails for what should be beyond the pale at our institutions of higher education. While there are certainly many kids and professors with legitimate criticism of Israeli policy toward the West Bank and Gaza, criticism of Israeli settlements, of restrictions on movement of Palestinians, of unfilled promises from past peace agreements, many campuses provide platforms for agitators with a much more sinister agenda, groups whose target is Israel itself not its policies or its politics. Sometimes these groups dress themselves up in the cooing sounds of the one state solution and calls for, quote, a democratic state for all Arabs and Jews. And it's not obvious to many students that these are code words for the destruction of Israel. There can be a lot of cognitive dissonance in this debate, who, for example, are often the leaders of the most virulently anti-Israel groups on campus, who often runs groups calling for Israel's destruction. A surprising number are Jews or Israelis. This can be very confusing for a freshman. Well, let's be candid. It's very confusing for anyone. But let's be clear. Non-Jews do not have a monopoly on anti-Semitism. Yes, Jews can be anti-Semites too. In my view, the leaders and organizers of a group called Jewish Voice for Peace, along with leaders of other groups like Students for Justice in Palestine and If Not Now, whether they are Jewish or non-Jewish, can be as hateful as the KKK. And I say that as someone who was held at gunpoint by the Klan during my own college experience 40 years ago. At a time like this, when emotions are high and nuance is tough to find, it is far too easy for our kids to fall for the easy answers these groups offer. We owe it to them to help them distinguish between groups that are constructive, groups that work humanely and compassionately for progressive change, groups that are truly building for peace between Israelis and Palestinians, and those groups whose real agenda is to delegitimize and ultimately destroy Israel. Let's remember that politics on campus is not the same as politics in the rest of the world. In Washington, where I live, we debate policies. Campuses, however, are a throwback to 1948, a time when the question of the day was still, should Israel exist? So, for example, APAC and J Street are at each other's throats in Washington on a variety of different issues. On campus, the situation is different. There, they are both Zionist organizations fighting against the delegitimization of Israel, and they share common adversaries, all those truly anti-Zionist groups I mentioned before. I'm not a fan of J Street in DC, but I don't criticize them because of the important work they do on campus, helping to provide a Zionist umbrella for our kids. So what sort of practical advice can I offer? Students, this is especially for you. First, get informed. Don't let the other side drown you in a flood of cherry-picked facts. If you want to learn the latest about the Middle East conflict, bookmark the website of the Washington Institute and read a smattering of Israeli media. My favorite, is the Times of Israel. Second, when you choose courses, find out if your professor has endorsed the academic boycott of Israel. More than 1,500 professors and instructors are listed by name as endorsing the U.S. campaign for the academic and cultural boycott of Israel here. 
Don't be surprised if the professors on your campus support the boycott of Israel. After all, the Professional Association of Middle East Educators itself, called MESA, the Middle East Studies Association, has endorsed the BDS movement. It's scandalous, but it's true. But not all Middle East experts on campus support these terrible ideas. Check out the professors associated with a group called Scholars for Peace in the Middle East, all of whom are committed to fighting against BDS on campus. And see if the professors on your campus are affiliated to Mesa's rival organization called ASMIA, the Association for the Study of the Middle East and Africa, an academic group established more than 15 years ago by Bernard Lewis and Fuad Ajami, two outstanding scholars disgusted by what was passing for expertise in their profession. Third, once inside the classroom, you have a right to expect learning and scholarship, not politics or propaganda. If you experience the slightest problem in class connected to the Middle East conflict, if your professor advocates a boycott of Israel in your class, or if your professor singles you out with extra assignments, low grades, or public ridicule because you expressed sympathy for Israel, mentioned a summer trip to Israel, or you just wore a Maccabi Tel Aviv t-shirt, speak up, talk with your advisor, tell campus authorities, let Hillel know, or contact the Israel on Campus Coalition. And if you get the slightest pushback from a professor, administrator, classmate, or dorm mate because of your Jewish identity, because you wear a kippah, because you have a Star of David around your neck, or because you prefer pregame bagels and locks to a pig picking, walk straight into the dean's office and file a complaint. The same goes for parents. When you hear about an incident from your kids, contact the dean, provost, or president of the university. After all, you are paying good money for your child's education. Speak up and be loud. Fourth, what about campus life? Engaging in debate, challenging others, and being challenged in your own views? That's what education is all about. But there's a time when debate crosses a line. How do you know when that line is crossed? When speakers start calling Israelis Nazis, it's easy, but it's not always so cut and dried. My advice, whatever you think, you are not alone. Whether you're on the campus of a huge state university where the course options are wide and extracurricular life is varied, or you're on a tiny liberal arts school campus where just one radical professor can have an outsized influence, there are still other students who share your hopes and dreams, kids who share your worldview. Look for them, find them, build on what you have in common. There is strength and solidarity. Learn from each other about the groups on your campus. Different groups take different names in different places. Remember, just because a group has the word Jewish or the word peace in its name doesn't mean it necessarily reflects your values. Ultimately, it's important to remain true to who you are. It is so easy on campus to follow the crowd, to go along, to get along. It takes courage to see a mass of students march in one direction, calling for something that sounds vaguely what you might support, but to choose a different path because you know what the words they're chanting really mean. You probably didn't think that going to college today requires you to be courageous but sometimes that's what it takes. Be confident, be proud. I'm sure you have it in you. So parents, if your daughter or son has the urge to get engaged, encourage them. Urge them to seek advice. Have them contact people they trust on campus and in your community. If they have questions, 
They're also welcome to contact the Washington Institute at this special address. I am proud that three of my colleagues, Dennis Ross, former White House Peace Process Envoy, David Mikovsky, an acclaimed journalist and former State Department official, and Rachel Omeri, a former Palestinian negotiator, all travel coast to coast talking on college campuses. They've been on the road a lot since October 7th. Their goal is to counteract the destructive ideas of the from the river to the sea crowd with constructive dialogue about the reality of Hamas and the potential for real peacemaking down the road. They and others like them have a powerful message that students need to hear. Eight years ago, I closed with saying, support your child as she or he navigates this difficult and often confusing terrain. They just need a little help. Today, the message is more urgent. Seeing what is happening on some campuses, it's clear we blew past DEFCON 3 and are now at DEFCON 2. Be vigilant, be alert, be prepared, and when warranted, be a university's worst nightmare, an angry, outraged parent. Please feel free to share this video with your friends on campus and in your community. And remember, this isn't just a Jewish issue. The vast majority of Americans, young and old, support a strong U.S.-Israel partnership, and they support a real and secure peace between Israelis and Palestinians. Anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism on campus are issues that affect everyone, Jews and non-Jews alike. It may not always seem this way, but the haters are a minority, a regrettably vocal minority, but a minority nonetheless. It won't be easy to put this genie back in the bottle, but with the help of good people across the political spectrum, good people of all faiths and good people of none, we can win this fight. I'm Rob Satloff. Thank you for tuning in.